We've got the Mazda CX-30 Turbo. And just a few months ago, Mazda introduced the Mazda 3 Turbo. Let's get in and take it for a ride. So we're in the CX-30 Turbo, and what do you get when you turbocharge it? How much power? Oh, wow, you get 250 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque on premium fuel. And if you run on regular gas, it's 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. It's got a 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine with a six-speed automatic transmission. And it has a standard all-wheel drive, and in Canada, it's only sold on one trim, and that's kind of the top GT trim. And we had the Mazda 3 just a few months ago with the same drivetrain, the same introduction, and we thought that was very good, but yeah. I think I like this better. Yeah, it's got to be the suspension in this. It just feels like a sportier drive, and we're not really sure if the Mazda 3 that we received had regular fuel or premium, what we have found with this is that it does feel faster and we are the first to have it so we know it has premium fuel. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what happened. The car was delivered to us, the Mazda 3, and even in our zero to 100 kilometer an hour times, people were like, oh, that's not so yeah. good. And, it, and, and driving this one right away, it's like, it feels like a totally different car. So that could be the difference, almost 25 more horsepower. And you have that option with this car, right? Yeah, you do. And back to your point about the suspension. I think because this is tuned for an SUV application, mm -hmm. the suspension is a little bit, you feel the bumps and, and, and yeah. things a little bit more. Yes. With the Mazda, it felt maybe too smooth. This gives you a bit more feedback. Yeah, the Mazda 3 Turbo was very refined, awesome engine. Yeah but just refined and smooth with a very quiet cabin. Yeah, this feels a little more, you feel more, put it that way. You feel more. Now make sure you stick around through the video because we have our price pause, we have fuel economy, we have questions, coffee and cars, a whole bunch of stuff. But right now we're gonna have a look at the key standard features. Here are the XC30 Turbo key standard features. An 8.8 .8 inch color display with Mazda Connect, seven inch driver display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, heated front seats, leather wrapped and heated steering wheel, power glass moonroof with one touch open, power rear lift gate, driver seat memory, LED head and tail lamps, and blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. Okay, Andrea, what do we have to put it in? We have to put it in S for subscribe, and if you can hit the notification bell, you get notified every time a video drops and then you can watch them. Plus a little elf will come out every morning and your car will be <laughs> spotlessly clean. We guarantee it. And you need to follow Andrea on Instagram because we have our hot topic coming up, our questions, coffee and cars, plus great photos. It's motormouth underscore Andrea. And for me, it's motormouth underscore auto. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. So just a few months ago, Mazda brought out the Mazda 3 Turbo. Yeah. And a lot of people like us reviewed it and said, you know, it didn't feel like a hot hatch. No. And then they did a video presentation for this vehicle and they referenced that and said, zero to 60 times, that's a mugs game. Really what we're trying to do is produce a car for a mature enthusiast. They must have said mature enthusiast three times in the video. Yeah, they definitely focused on it. They believe that they have a buyer who is more are mature, practical, and at the same time would like the performance of a turbo engine. They want the power when they need it. And they also are trying to move the Mazda brand upscale as an alternative to buying a premium car. So we're going to get into that in our hot topic in just a moment. But I think that you can see that with this car that they have uh, a, a totally unique offering in the marketplace. It doesn't really have a direct competitor. Well, here's the thing about it. When it comes to horsepower and you compare it to some of these luxury brands, it beats them all in this category. Yeah, that's true. Uh, when you run it on regular gas, it's the same as most of them. But when you put premium gas in it, it's got like almost 25 horsepower more. And the torque, whether you run it on regular or premium, it still beats these luxury brands. So this is a philosophy with Mazda or Mazda, sorry Americans, that are uh, trying to move the brand upscale and as an alternative, I think there's going to be a lot of people that will take this over having the badge of a Mercedes Audi or BMW on the front. 
For sure, and here's a big reason why. Look at this interior. First off, it comes with heated seats like the others do, but it has a heated steering wheel. Yeah, and the hey. premium brands, whether it's the you know Mercedes, Audi, or BMW, they charge you for that. Yeah. And this, it's it's included. It is. And oh, whoa, 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 whoa! I should say oh, one thing. Yeah. The steering wheel is only heated at uh, at nine and three. I know. It's not heated all the way around. So they giveth and they taketh away. Why is that? Yeah. Now they're going in the direction of Toyota and Lexus. Yeah. I also like this moonroof. It's a one touch. It comes standard as well. And then look at this center console. It is just so beautiful. It's got a great shifter. One thing that is different is that Mazda no longer offers a touch screen on this model. You have the controller at the center console. It reminds me a lot of the way Audi used to be. I don't mind it. We had an Audi A7. I love the controller at the center console. This is just as easy to use. And I did a poll on Instagram. Oh, I, I was just gonna say, I'm gonna hold my hands up too long. I, I, no finger, <laughs> no fingerprints on the screen. Okay, get to your poll. So I did a poll. I don't wanna just do jazz hands. No, do jazz hands. Um, I did a poll on Instagram where I asked, would it bother you that you do not get a touch screen? Well, 51% said, no, doesn't bother me at all. It is a very good system and you're right. It's very similar to the old MMI. Now, what about the materials, the color and the combination in here? Beautiful, just beautiful. It's all leather, the dash is black but it also has some brown as a contrasting color and then look at these beautiful seats boy do they ever look fabulous when they're new i don't know about dark <laughs> denim jeans but it looks so good right now so i have uh somebody that contacts me actually he takes part in the live show all the time he's yeah. in quebec he yeah. was looking at the xc40 from volvo the q3 and so on and he landed on this car but mm. you know what he didn't buy the top trim because he hates the brown he says i'm not an old man I'm a young guy why I want all the features that you get yeah. on the top trim but I don't want brown see you like it you like the earth tones I actually think the brown is very modern I I think if you put some wood trim in here I get no, the no. old man vibe yeah but no I I don't see it at all I think it looks gorgeous it does look good but he's a younger guy uh, I don't think they have kids him okay. and his wife he want he wanted the top trim but with all black fair enough Fair enough, and they maybe should offer that. Now let's move to the second row. <laughs> second row is a little bit cramped. She's I mean, toyed. nothing like the CX-5, obviously. So basically this just feels like a Mazda 3 to me, all jacked up. Andrea, that's what it is. <laughs> it's a Mazda 3 all jacked up. Yeah. Uh, what about all the cladding on the outside? Now, a lot of people commented when the Mazda CX-30 video dropped that we did last year. They said it would look like Tupperware yeah. on the outside. I don't agree with that. I think it's it, there's there's quite a bit of it, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it too. It doesn't bother me. This turbo also comes with you know the turbo badge on the exterior. You get kind of all those little extras, um, which I think look pretty cool. Yeah, but that's it. There's no other thing that discerns that this is the turbo. This is very, very subtle. It is subtle, and uh, it comes with 18-inch wheels as well. These ones have black alloy wheels. Yeah, that's the way it comes, yeah. black alloy. Yeah. And I don't like black wheels. I know, you hate black wheels. Well, the well, thing is, with I this car, you, wait a second, curve. if you just look at it, the, the wheels just disappear. They're black wheels, black tires, black cladding. It just looks like the car is kind of hovering over the ground. Mm. If you had a bright silver wheel, you would actually see the wheel. Sure, I, I don't mind either or. I think they both look great. I think the biggest problem with black wheels is if you're not a very good parallel <laughs> parker and you scuff the wheels. At least with a silver wheel, it's forgiving. Andrea is a pro parallel parker. I'm pretty good. Uh, she talked about it on the last video with the Cadillac Escalade. She slung that into a parking spot, no problem. We parallel park in front of her house every day. Yeah. We have no curb rash on our wheels. She's good. Wasn't <laughs> always good, but now she's good. Oh my gosh. You had some uh, I had some run-ins as well. So let's be honest. Yeah, we'll it's leave it at that. Me. All right, now it's time to stop and have a coffee. <laughs> Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. What is your least favorite thing about the driving experience? Well, I actually don't have a least favorite thing. 
I think it handles so well and I definitely prefer this turbo engine over the non-turbo. I just feel like I have more confidence. There's only one criticism I can think of and that's that, you know, it's only got a six-speed automatic transmission. Now Mazda makes a big deal about it. It always has the right gear for the right situation. But if you had more gears, you could ring out even more. I'm not totally buying that. Okay, that's a good point. Notice any difference in quality now that these are assembled in Mexico? No, no nothing at great. all. And here's the thing, I've been to dozens of factories around the world, they all look the same. They're basically set up to the standard of the brand, and that's yeah, for Mazda. Sure, and I don't think Mazda would put up with anything less. No. Our hot topic is coming up. Uh, we almost chose this question for our hot topic. I am always confused about this. The CX-30 is close, similar in price and size to the CX-5. Why did they launch the CX-30 and which would you choose? Well, it's actually such a great point. Obviously, the CX-5 is bigger and wider and probably more practical for families because of the back seat the and back the seat. cargo space, right? The back right? seat is the most noticeable. You know, this is not a big back seat. No. And the, and the CX-5 is actually one of the smaller in that class. Yes. And uh, so if you're a family, just get the CX-5. Now, th what's the price difference? So the price difference of the CX-5 Turbo compared to this Turbo is just over $3,500 more. So it does make sense. And here's the thing, Mazda says after doing a ton of research that 43% of their sales in Canada go to the CX-5. It's the Mazda 3 that's second. And then in third place with 16% of the sales is this CX-30. Not for long. This is going to pass the Mazda 3 in my opinion. So which one would we choose? Well, if I want more space, I would take the CX-5. But the thing about this CX-30 is because it's smaller, it is so fun to drive. So if you don't need the space and you want the fun drive, this might be the way to go. Yeah, you know what? For what it's going to cost you per month, maybe $50, $60, $80 more a month. I think the CX-5, you get a lot more vehicle. You do. More space. This is a vehicle for a couple, whether they're before kids or after kids. That's who's buying it. In my opinion, this should be the CX-3. The CX-3 is, is irrelevant now. This, yeah. this is the car you should buy instead yeah. of that. Is that and it? that's it. All right. If you want to get a question in, you have to follow along. By the way, the hot topic is coming. We're going to feature one question specifically and flesh it out. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to get your questions in. And because we hear the music, that means it's time for nightlife. So our hot topic is still to come, but let's check out the competition. For your consideration, four categories and four vehicles for you to consider. So the first two vehicles are the two main competitors. Mazda states that these two vehicles are cross shop the most with this CX-30. The first is the Chevrolet Trailblazer LS all-wheel drive. It starts at almost $26,000 and has 155 horsepower and 174 pound-feet of torque. The second competitor goes to the Hyundai Kona all-wheel drive turbo. It starts at around $27,000 and has 175 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. The next category is premium car alternative and that goes to the Audi Q3. It's cross shop the most with this CX-30 in the luxury category. It has a starting price of $39,250 with 228 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. It also runs on regular gas. And our final category is to the green alternative. It goes to the Lexus UX250 hybrid all-wheel drive. It has a starting price of just over $40,000. It has 181 horsepower and gets good fuel economy, 5.7 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and 6.2 liters on the highway. So there are four vehicles for your consideration. So we've come up with a new feature, it's called Hot Topic. So we basically take questions, coffee and cars and expand on it. Yep. And we pick one question, Andrew's gonna read it. Our Hot Topic from Instagram goes to Matt. Curious, does the turbo elevate the CX-30 to a viable alternative to luxury competitors like the X2, GLA and Q3? 
I think the answer is, oh, hell yeah, this competes with those cars. Oh, my gosh, does it ever compete? I mean, from an interior level, for sure, the fit and finish and quality in here is beautiful and, in some cases, better, better than yep. some of these luxury brands. And then price point, right? The value is there. They're all more expensive, and you get so much more in this. The only thing I would say in the defense of, say, the Q3 and the one that wasn't included in there was the Volvo XC40 yes. and the GLA, a bit bigger back seat, right? Yes. I think that there's a little bit more room. This is really a bit tight, but that I think is really the only downside. And the big difference is the badge. Yeah, you're right. I mean, some people will care about the badge and other people will not. They just want a really great deal with excellent value and you get it with yeah. this Mazda. It's like I always say when people are shopping for a car, do you want the, a great deal or the newest and the latest? Yeah. So this is the same thing. Do you want a great deal or do you want to be seen to be in the more prestigious brand? And you have to do that gut check. Yeah. And you have to say to yourself, eh, I'm okay with driving a Mazda. Right. If you are, you're getting one hell of a car and you get to sleep at night thinking, I got a good deal and I'm smarter than everybody else. And that extra torque you get in this, none of the other competitors have the same amount of torque. So that's all true, but when you factor in the price, that's where this vehicle really shines. Let's do our price boss. The turbo comes in at $36,250. And just a comparison to some of the other trims on the CX-30, the GX is $24,550, the GS just over $27,000, and the GT gets closer to $34,000. But back to that CX-5 is only like $3,500 more. Yeah, just yeah. over $3,500 more. Same, same look on the inside, yeah. same engine, but bigger. And that's going to be its closest competitor. For sure. All right. Now, fuel economy is quite interesting. Yeah. Is that even though you get a turbocharged engine, the penalty in fuel is so, so marginal. What are the official numbers? This turbo gets 10.5 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and 7.9 on the highway. Okay, it's Andrea's money. Andrea needs a car. Are you gonna buy a Q3, a GLA, or are you gonna be fine with the Mazda badge knowing you save money? I'd be totally fine with the Mazda badge. I just think it comes down to budget. If you could get a Q3 progressive trim, then maybe that would be something I would buy or a GLA, you know, coming in around 45,000 if that was my budget. If I want something for under 40, fully loaded, this is it. Good point. All I can say is Mazda, you nailed it with this CX-30 Turbo. When you compare it to mainline cars, it certainly has way more power than all of its competitors. And when you compare it to the premium vehicles, it actually outperforms many of those. So they have a unique spot in the marketplace and they're gonna sell a whole lot of these. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.